Hi, we are Miguel Francisco and Luis Alberto and we're going to talk about Chapter 8, IP Addressing. Addressing is a key function of network layer protocols that enable data communication between hosts regardless of whether the hosts are on the same network or on different networks. Both Internet Protocol version 4 and Internet Protocol version 6 provide hierarchical addressing for packages that carries data. Designing, implementing, and managing an effective IP address plan assures that the networks can operate effectively and efficiently. This chapter examines in detail the structure of IP address and the application to the construction and testing IP networks and subnetworks. To understand the operation of devices on a network, we need to look at addresses and other data the way devices do in binary notation. Binary notation is a representation of information using only ones and zeros. Computers communicate using binary data. Binary data can be used to represent many different forms of data. For example, when typing letters on a keyboard, those letters appear on screen in a form that you can read and understand. However, the computer translates each letter to a series of binary digits of storage and transport. To translate those letters, the computer uses American Standard Code for Information Interchange, also known as ASCII. The IPv4 addresses are structured by a 32-bit binary numbers. However, for ease of use by people, binary patterns representing IPv4 address are expressed as dotted decimal. This is first accomplished by separating each byte of the 32-bit binary pattern called an octet with a dot. It is called an octet because each decimal number represents one byte or eight bits. To represent IPv4 addresses, it's only necessary that we examine the process of converting 8-bit binary to the decimal values of 0 to 255 for each object in an IPv4 address. The value of the four objects can range from 0 to a maximum of 255. In this example, we could see that every byte of the object has a different value. These values are going to be sent and every object will have a different value, so every object will form what is called the address. Understanding binary notation is important when determining if two hosts are in the same network. Recall that an IP address is an hypothetical address that is made up of two parts, a network portion and a host portion. But when determining the network portion versus the host portion, it is necessary to look not at the decimal value, but at the 32-bit stream. Within the 32-bit stream, a portion of the bits make up the network and a portion of the bits make up the host. The bit with it, the network portion of the address must be identical for all devices that reside in the same network. The bits within the host portion of the address must be unique to identify a specific host within a network. Regardless of whether the decimal numbers between two IPv4 addresses match up, if two hosts have the same bit pattern in the specific network portion of the 32-bit stream, those two hosts will reside in the same network. But how does host know which portion of the 32 bits is the network and which is the host? That is the job of the subnet max. Network prefixes the prefix len is another way of expressing the subnet max. The prefix len is the number of bits set to 1 in the subnet max. It is written in slash notation, a slash followed by the number of bits set to 1. For example, if the subnet max is 255.255.255.0, there are 24 bits set to 1 in the binary version of the subnet max. So the prefix len is 24 bits or slash 24. The prefix and the subnet max are different ways of representing the same thing, the network portion of an address. Type of addresses. There are three types of addresses within the address range of each IPv4 network. 
network address, host address, and broadcast address. Let's define each one. The network address is a standard way to refer to a network. The subnet max or the perfect length might also be used when referring to a network address. This address has a zero for each host bit in the host portion of the address. All hosts with the network share the same network address. Host address. Every end device requires a unique address to communicate on the network. In IPv4 addresses, the values between the network address and the broadcast address can be assigned to the end device in a network. The IPv4 broadcast address is a special address for each network that allows communication to all the hosts in that network. To send data to all hosts in a network at once, a host can send a single package that is addressed to the broadcast address of the network, and each host in the network that receives this package will process its content. When sending network data, the device uses this information to determine whether it can send package locally, or it must send the package to a default gateway for remote delivery. When a host sends a package, it compares the network portion of its own IP address to the network portion of the destination IP address, based on the subnet max. If the network bits match, both the source and the destination host are the same net and on the same network and the package can be delivered locally. If they do not match, the sending host forwards the package to the default gateway to be sent to another network. The AND operation AND is one of three basic binary operations used in digital logic. The other two are OR and NOT. While OR3 are used in data networks, AND is used in determining the network address. Static versus Dynamic IP With a static assignment, the network administrator must manually configure the network information for a host. There are several advantages to static addressing. For instance, they are useful for printers, servers, and other networking devices that do not change location often and need to be accessible to clients on the network based on a fixed IP address. If hosts normally access a server at a particular IP address, they will cause problems if that address change. Additionally, a static assignment of addressing information can provide increased control of network resources. For example, it is possible to create access filters based on a traffic to a form and a specific IP address. However, static addressing can be time consuming to enter on each host. When using static IP addressing, it is necessary to maintain an accurate list of the IP address assigned to each device. These are permanent addresses and are not usually reused. On the other hand, the dynamic IP is used when on a local network it is often that the user population changes frequently. News users arrive with laptops and need a connection. Others have network workstation or other network devices, such as smartphones that need to be connected. Rather than have the network administrator assign IP addresses for each workstation, it is easier to have IP addresses assigned automatically. This is done using the protocol known as a dynamic host configuration protocol, also known as DHCP. Another benefit of the DHCP is that address is not permanently assigned to a host, but it is least for a period of time. If host is powered down or taken off the network, the address is returned to the pool for refuse. This feature is especially helpful for mobile users that come and go on a network. If DCHP is enabled on a host device, the IP config command can be used to view the IP address information assigned by the DCPH safe. Transmissions type In IPv4 network, the host can communicate on three ways. Unicast, broadcast, and multicast. The unicast is the process of sending packages from one host to an individual host. 
It is used for normal host-to-host -host communication in both client server and peer-to-peer -peer network. Unicast package used addresses of the destination device as the destination address and can be wrote through an internet book. The broadcast is a process of sending a package from one host to all hosts of a network. It is used for communication that is limited to the host on the local network. This package always uses a destination IPv4 255.255.255. Routers do not forward a limited broadcast. For this reason, an IPv4 network it is also referred to as a broadcast domain. Routers from the boundary for broadcast domain. The multicast is the process of sending a package from one host to a select group of hosts, possibly in different networks. It has been designed to conserve the bandwidth of an IPv4 network. It reduces traffic by allowing a host to send a single package to a select set of hosts that are part of subscribing multicast group. To reach multiple destination hosts using unicast communication, a source host will need to send an individual package address to each host. With multicast, the source host can send a single package that can reach thousands of destination hosts. The Internet Works responsibility is to replicate the multicast flown in an efficient manner so that they reach only the intent recipient. In all these three cases, the IPv4 address of the originating host is placed in the package header as the source address. Public versus private. Also, most IPv4 host addresses are public addresses designed for use in networks that are accessible on internet. There are blocks of addresses that are used in networks that require limited or no internet access. These addresses are called private addresses. Hosts in different networks may use the same private space addresses. Packages using these addresses as the source of destination should not appear on the public internet. The router or firewall device at the perimeter of these private networks must blocks or translate these addresses. Even if this package were to make their way to the internet, the routers will not have routers to forward them to the appropriate private network. The vast majority of the addresses in the IPv4 unicast host range are public addresses. These addresses are designed to be used in the host that are publicly accessible from the internet. Even within this IPv4 addresses block, there are many addresses that are designated from other special purpose. Special addresses There are certain addresses that cannot be assigned to host. There are also special addresses that can be assigned to host, but with restriction on how those hosts can interact within the network. These addresses are loopback, link local addresses, testnet addresses and experimental addresses. The loopback address creates a shortcut method for TCP IP application and service that run on the same device to communicate with one another. By using the loopback addresses instead of the assigned IPv4 host addresses, two servers on the same host can bypass the lower layers of the TCP IP stack. You can also ping the loopback address to test the configuration of the TCP IP on the local host. Any address within block will loop back the local host. No addresses within this block should ever appear on any network. The link local addresses can be automatically assigned to the local host by the operating system in environment where no IP configuration is available. This might be used in a small peer-to-peer -peer network or for a host that could not automatically obtain an address from a DHCP server. Link local addresses do not provide services outside of the local network. However, many client server and peer-to-peer -peer applications will work properly with IPv4 local addresses. The testnet addresses is set aside for teaching and learning purposes. These addresses can be used in documentation and network examples. Unlike the experimental addresses, network devices will accept these addresses in their configuration. 
The experimental artist is a block that are least reserved for future use. Also establishes in the RFC 3313. Currently, these artists can only be used for research or experimentation purposes, but cannot be used in an IPv4 network. According to the RFC that has been said, they could technically be converted to usable address in the future. Now let's talk about IP addresses classes. Historically, the RFC 1700 assigned numbers group the unicast range into a specific site called class A, class B, and class C addresses. It also defined class D and class E as multicast and experimental as previously presented. The unicast addresses class A, B, and C define specifically site networks and specific address blocks for these networks. A company or organization was assigned an entire network for class A, class B, or class C address block. This use of address space is referred to a classful addressing. Let's define class A, B, and C. This class A block addresses was designed to support extremely large networks with more than 16 million host addresses. Class A IPv4 addresses use a fixed slash 8 prefix with the first octet to indicate the network address. The class B block addresses space was designed to support the needs of moderate large size networks with up an approximately of 65,000 hosts. Class B had slightly more efficient allocation of addresses than Class A because it equally divides 25% of the total IPv4 addresses space among approximately 16,000 networks. The Class C blocks address space was the most commonly available of the history address. This address space was intended to provide addresses for small networks with a maximum of 254 hosts. Class C address blocks use a slash 24 prefix. Now let's define the IPv6 network addresses. The IPv6 is designed to be the successor to IPv4. IPv6 has a larger 128 bit address space, providing for 314 on the Cilian addresses. However, IPv6 is much more than just larger addresses. When the IETF began its development of a successor to IPv4, it used this opportunity to fix the limitation of IPv4 and include additional management. The depletion of IPv4 address space has been the motivating factor for moving the IPv6 as Africa, Asia, and other areas of the world become more connected to the Internet, there are not enough IPv4 addresses to accommodate this world. With an increasing Internet population, a limited IPv4 address space issues with NET and an Internet of Things, the time has, has come to begin the transition to IPv6. Now let's define the Internet of Things. The Internet of today is significantly different than the Internet of past decades. The Internet of today is more than email, web page, and file transfer between computers. The involved Internet is becoming an Internet of Things. No longer will the only devices accessing the Internet be computers, tablets, and smartphones. The sensor equipment, Internet ready devices of tomorrow will include everything from automobiles and biomedical devices. The household applicants and natural ecosystems. Protocols have tools. There is not a single day to move to IPv6. For the foreseeable future, both IPv4 and IPv6 will coexist. The transition is expected to take years. The IETF has created various protocols and tools to help network administrators migrate their network to IPv6. The migration techniques can be divided into three categories. Dual stack. As shown in figure 1, 
DualStack allows IPv4 and IPv6 to coexist on the same network. DualStack devices run both IPv4 and IPv6 protocol stacks simultaneously. The other is tunneling. As shown in the figure 2, tunneling is a method of transporting an IPv6 package over an IPv4 network. The IPv6 package is encapsulated inside an IPv4 package similar to other types of data. And the last one is translation. As shown in figure 3, Network Addressing Translation 64 allows IPv6 enabled devices to communicate with IPv4 enabled devices using a translation technique similar to NAT for IPv4. An IPv6 package is translated to an IPv4 package and vice versa. Unlike IPv4 addresses that are expressed in dotted decimal notation, IPv6 addresses are represented using hexadecimal values. We have seen hexadecimal used in the packet byte pane of Wireshark. In Wireshark, hexadecimal is used to represent the binary values within frames and package. Hexadecimal is also used to represent Ethernet Media Access Control, also known as MAC address. The hexadecimal is a convenient way to represent binary values. Just as decimal is a base 10 numbering system and binary is base 2, hexadecimal is base 16 system. The base 16 numbering system used the numbers from 0 to 9 and the letters A to F. Figure 1 shows the equivalent decimal binary and hexadecimal values. There are 16 unique combinations of 4 bits from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. The 16 digit hexadecimal is the perfect number system to use because any 4 bits can be represented with a single hexadecimal value. IPv6 addresses are 128 bit in length and written as a string of hexadecimal values. Every 4 bit is represented by a single hexadecimal digit, for a total of 32 hexadecimal values. IPv6 addresses are not case sensitive and can be written in either lower case or upper case. Compression rules. The first rule to help reduce the notation of IPv6 addresses is any leading zeros in any 16-bit section of X that can be omitted. This rule only applies to leading zeros, not to trailing zeros. Otherwise, the address will be ambiguous. For example, the X deck ABC could be either 0ABC or ABC0. The second rule to help reduce the notation of IPv address is that the double column can replace any single continuous string of one or more than 16 bit segment consists of all zeros. The double column can only be used once within an address, otherwise, there will be more than one possible resulting address. When used the omitting leading zeros technique, the notation of IPv address can often be greatly reduced. This is commonly known as the compressed format. Type of communications. The IPv6 has the unicast. It is used to uniquely identify an interface on an IPv6 enabled device. As shown in the figure, a source IPv6 address must be unicast address. The multicast that is used to send a single IPv6 package to a multiple destination and the anycast. A package sent to an anycast address is routed to the nearest device having that address. Anycast addresses are beyond the scope of this course. Unlike IPv4, IPv6 does not have a broadcast address. However, there is an IPv6 or not multicast address that essentially gives the same result. The IPv6 prefix is used to represent the prefix portion of the address. The IPv6 does not use the dotted decimal subnet max notation. The prefix length is used to indicate the network portion of an IPv6 address using an IPv6 address slash prefix length. The prefix length can range from 0 to 128. A typical IPv6 prefix length for LANs and most other type networks is slash 64. This means the prefix or the network portion of the address is 64 bits in length, leaving another 66 bits for the interface ID or horse portion of the The IPv6 unicast address can have many different specifications. 
like global unicast. A global unicast address is similar to a public IPv4 address. These are globally unique internet routable address. Global unicast address can be configured statically or assignedly dynamically. There are some important differences in how a device receives its IPv6 address dynamically compared to DC DHCP for IPv4. The link local address are used to communicate with other devices on the same local link. With IPv6, the term link refers to a subnet. Link local address are confined to a single link. Their Unix must only be configured on that link because they are not routable beyond the link. In other words, routers will not forward package with a local link, source and destination address. The loopback address is used by a host to send a package to itself and cannot be assigned to a physical interface. Similar to IPv4 loopback address, you can ping an IPv6 loopback address to test the configuration of TCP IP on the local host. The IPv6 loopback address is all zeros except for the last bit, represented as double column 1 slash 128. On a specific address. And on a specific address is all zeros address represented and compressed as shown in the figure. It cannot be assigned to an interface and it only be used on a source address in an IPv6 package. An unified address is used as a source address when the device does not yet have permanent IPv6 address or when the source of the package is irrelevant to the destination. The unit lookup addresses have some similar RFC 1918 private address for IPv4, but there are significantly different as well. Unique local addresses are used for local addressing with a site or between a limited number of sites. This address should not be routable in global IPv6. And the embedded IPv4 is an IPv4 embedded address. These addresses are used to help transition from IPv4 to IPv6. To configure a router, most IPv6 configuration and verification commands in Cisco IOS are similar to the IPv4 counterpart. In many cases, the only difference is the use of IPv6 place of IP within the command. Just as with IPv4, configuring static address on clients does not scale to large environment. For this reason, most network administrators in IPv6 network will enable dynamic assignment of IPv6 address. There are two ways in which a device can obtain an IPv6 global unicast address automatically. Statical address configuration or DHCP v6. The IEEE defined the extended unique identifier process that use a 48-bit Ethernet MAC address of a client and insert another 60 bits in the middle of the 48-bit MAC address to create a 64-bit interface ID. To create this, you divide the MAC address between the IOE and device interface. Insert the hexadecimal value FFFE in binary and convert the first two hexadecimal values of the OUE to binary and flip the U slash B bit. To configure the link local address manually provides the ability to create an address that is recognizable and easier to remember. It can be configured manually using the same interface command used to create IPv6 global unicast address but with additional pattern. You can verify the configuration with the commands show interface show IP show IP interface brief. The TCP IP suite sends an ESCMP message that the purpose is to feedback about the issues related to the processing of IP package under certain conditions. It has host confirmation, destination service, and time extended and route redirection. You can also ping to test the ability of local hosts to communicate across an internet network. The local host can ping an operation IPv4 host of a remote network as shown in the figure. So that will be all for chapter 8. Thanks for watching.